over here would be a great place. We, we see something in that. Day. to welcome you to the park unveiling commemorating the 25th anniversary of the World Expo 88. There's just a few formalities before the Premier and the Lord Mayor are escorted to the cultural forecourt to actually officially open the picnic in the park. So without further ado, I'd like to invite our Premier, the Honourable Carol Newman MP, to address us. Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, it's a terrific uh, day, isn't it? It's just fantastic to be in these wonderful South Bank parklands. And it is a delight to be here on a very important... Uh, uh, these are their traditional lands. It's right and proper that we do that on these occasions. Can I acknowledge uh, the Lord Mayor and Lady Mayoress uh, and to the Brisbane City Council councillors are here, my former colleagues. Uh, particularly, I need to acknowledge our guest of honour, Sir Lou Edwards and Lady Jane. Great to, to see you here this morning. Uh, can I also acknowledge Jane's colleagues, the, the Consular Corps here in Queensland, but we're particularly honoured here this morning to have His Excellency the High Commissioner for Sri Lanka, uh, who has joined us. It's great to see you here this morning, sir. Uh, but to you, ladies and gentlemen, again, welcome uh, this morning. What well, we're here today to celebrate is one of those critical turning points in the history of this city and the history of this state, uh, where Brisbane particularly came of age. Uh, and I'm of course referring to Expo 88. And we all have the most amazing memories of that uh, period of, uh, of months, uh, starting off 25 years ago in April 1988. I share with you this morning, I had a somewhat more exotic location. Uh, I was on uh, an army reconnaissance of the easternmost province, Tulutu province of the Solomon Islands, on a tiny coral island 750 kilometres east of Guadalcanal, right out in the middle of nowhere, uh, listening to the whole opening ceremony on a shortwave radio, and I can well remember the signal sort of going strong and fading out, and strong and fading out, and there was the description of all these goings on on the Brisbane River. I, I was a long way away, but I certainly, with my team of colleagues uh, on this very small party out in the middle of nowhere, weren't missing the action. So I can vividly remember that. And I also, of course, vividly remember the trips uh, that I, I had to Expo because at the time the Army had sent me down to Sydney, away from the place I'd fallen in love with, and I was to return a couple of years later, never to leave. But um, um, I remember very, very vividly coming and enjoying, enjoying all the fun of Expo 88. And we all have so many memories. And that's particularly what we are doing today. But before we get into those celebrations, we're, of course, here to particularly acknowledge uh, the people, and particularly the man who led those efforts to create Expo 88. Today I pay tribute, and we all pay tribute to the leadership of Sir Lou Edwards and the Expo Authority, who for a period of eight years were charged with the important, indeed critical responsibility of planning an event that was ultimately to see 18 million visitors uh, during that period in 1988 come here. And that was indeed the population of Australia back in those days. So the painstaking work to go around the world, to see the best of previous events, to pull it all together, the choreographing of the whole series of entertainment and events so that the thing kept renewing over the period of those months, the logistics involved in doing all that. And so many great things came of it. If you reflect on... Um, Brisbane pre-Sally Ann Atkinson and pre-Expo 88, you weren't allowed to actually sit out there and join outdoor dining uh, because that, was, had, that had been banned for so many years it was considered to be unhealthy and improper in a subtropical city. And we would marvel at that today, especially 
in these wonderful surroundings with so much uh, vitality and uh, great, uh, like, such a great lifestyle is enjoyed all the time. So, again I just say that uh, Expo 88 truly was a turning point for Brisbane and uh, it was something that touched so many, many, many lives in this city and set us on a new path to where in the last few years uh, the Lord Mayor and his team particularly successfully rebranded this as Australia's New World City. And you can lay that all back to 1988 and Expo 88. Uh, I want to thank Salu and his team today. Uh, that's particularly what we're here to do. The outstanding leadership, the commitment, the single-minded purpose of that eight-year period is what truly led to an outstanding event for the city of Brisbane. Um, and I, I know that Salu has been recognised before in 2010 as uh, a Queensland great. But today, I think, on the 25th anniversary, it is just so vitally important particularly in this small but important ceremony, acknowledge his great leadership and the leadership of the authority for the people of Brisbane and the people of Queensland. So uh, on behalf of the state today, Salou, uh, thank you so much for your efforts. Uh, we greatly appreciate what you and your team do uh, for this state. Thank you indeed, ladies and gentlemen. It now gives me great pleasure to introduce to you the Right Honourable Lord Mayor of Brisbane, Councillor Graham Quirk. Well, thank you very much, Pip. To the uh, traditional custodians, ladies and gentlemen, I pay my respects to the elders, both past and present. Uh, to the Honourable uh, Campbell Newman, Premier of Queensland, and Lisa. Uh, if I can depart and acknowledge uh, the Honourable Sir Lou Ellen Edwards, um, uh, AC, former Chairman and CEO of Expo and Lady Jane Edwards, to Lady Maress Ann Quirk, to Councillor Matthew Burke, Councillor Andrew Rowan Taylor, Councillor Andrew Wines, Councillor Fiona King, Councillor Vicky Howard, uh, to the Expo 88 Anniversary Committee, to the Consular Corps and His Excellency, a welcome to you this morning as well. And to all of you ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, thank you for being part of this ceremony. I just want to echo the Premier's comments that this is overdue. Uh, there is absolutely no doubt that World Expo 88 was a game changer for this city. This was an event which took Brisbane from the proverbial big country town to the thriving metropolis that we are today. And that 18 million people that visited Expo during that six month period really went through a transformational awakening. Uh, and it was good for our city. And out of it, you might all recall the term that uh, became an endearment uh, out of that longer than an Expo queue. Uh, this city didn't know about queuing before Expo 88 came along. Uh, and it was another awakening for us as part and parcel of what was a wonderful international gathering, a flavour which was just an outstanding event for this city. And when we look back and we think about it, um, that site was just an old rundown industrial site and Expo 88 was very much part of the bicentennial celebrations for Australia. I want to today though, um, pay a very big debt of thanks to Sir Lou Edwards for chairing uh, that, uh, th that event, for being CEO of that event, for taking what was a derelict site and transforming it and turning it into a site which we all enjoyed. From the chicken dance right through, uh, there was something spectacular every single day. The, the fantastic uh, the street uh, displays and uh, parades, uh, we all recall the wonderful memories. But today I just wanted to uh, say a little bit about um, that event itself. At the opening ceremony, um, World Expo 88, Salou, um, in addressing Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, who formally opened Expo, said this, he said, on behalf of all the Expo family, we are grateful for the privilege of being part of this great challenge and I hope that over the next 184 days that all the world will be influenced by the goodwill, the cooperation, 
and the benefits of World Expo 88. And of course, it captured them in a saying, together we'll show the world. And Salu and your committee it certainly did. It was a, an expo which had a theme, um, and that theme was leisure in the age of technology. It could well be as relevant today, so, uh, but of course that was the theme for World Expo. I want to tell you a little about Sir Lou Edwards himself. Uh, I have his birth date here, and that will remain a secret between <laughs> Sir Lou and myself. There's some things that you just don't share, Sir Lou, but, but I want to recount that Lou Edwards started his working life as an electrician in the family business. And uh, after a period of hospitalisation, he decided on a career change, and that was to the world of medicine. He uh, went to university, became a doctor, served uh, in a medical practice in Ipswich, and then of course entered Parliament in 1972. He became Health Minister in 1974 and served in that role to 1978. He became Deputy Premier and Treasurer of Queensland, which he held from 1978 to 1983. And then, of course, there was World Expo 88. But life did not finish there for Salu, because he then went on in 1993, where he was elected the 12th Chancellor for the University of Queensland and held that office until the 9th of February 2009. In 1984, uh, Salu was made a Knight Bachelor, and in 1989, a Companion of the Order of Australia. And so today it is, as the Premier said, a very fitting tribute to a man who has made such a tremendous contribution, not only in heading Expo 88, which we recognise today, but a far broader uh, contribution to Queenslanders as a whole. So today, Salu, to you and your committee of Expo 88, we pay tribute and thanks. Thank you, Mayor. It now gives me great pleasure to invite Sir Lou to address us. The Honourable Campbell Newman, Premier of Queensland, and Mrs Lisa Newman. The Lord Mayor of Brisbane, Councillor Graham Quirk, and Mrs Anne Quirk. Uh, councillors of the Brisbane City Council, members of the Consular Corps, Mr. Bob Minikin, who was the strength to, to behind me and with me in Expo 88, uh, the executive of Expo 88, eight wonderful men and women, and ladies and gentlemen. Today I'd like to acknowledge firstly the tradition, uh, traditional owners and custodians of the land on which we are pre pleased and proud to be meeting today. Mr. Premier, I'm extremely touched by this rec recognition of the 25th anniversary of what I think was the greatest event in Australia's history, but that's possibly a little bit biased. In 1983, I retired from the Parliament of Queensland, in some said and was invited by the then Premier and the Prime Minister of Australia to be Chairman of Expo 88. Little did I know about an exposition. I certainly had never been to one, nor had I really known anything about an exposition. But I want to say very clearly that we began on day one and Bob Minikin was with me from that time. We began to look for a site and we didn't recognise that there was no site yet available. So we acquired the site overnight. I'm not sure, Mr Premier, that is possible today. We acquired 80 properties owned by many people and then we began the planning the development and finally the operation of the exposition. Planning for 184 days of activities from 10 in the morning till 10 p.m. tonight. My team 
of whom I am extremely proud, and I invested five years of our lives, a minimum of 12 hours a day, sometimes 20 hours a day, usually seven days a week, to ensure that everything was perfect on opening day and remain so for 184 days. And I actually think we achieved that. We opened the expo, as I mentioned, on time, on the 30th of April, 1988, and closed the event 184 days later with 18,560,447 visitors I wish we would have had three more, and then we would have been able to say 18,000, 450 people. Let me get serious again. We had participating nations from every continent, and I paid tribute today. And if I could say in pure Australian language, I tip my lid to them, to Bob Minikin. Stand up, Bob. Yeah. And I'd like the others to put their hand up and stand up too. Peter Goldstein. <laughs> Ross Huron. I'm not sure if Ross is here. Jane Brumfield. I've got to know her very well since I've Richard John, Graham Curry, Barbara Absalom, <laughs> and Ken Coates. It was regarded by many Australians that the Expo was the happiest, the safest, and most interesting place to be in 1988, with the largest daily attendance being 182,762 on-site in Perth. I refer, like to refer to the queues outside the pavilions. They were remarkable. And we found out that many people were getting in the queue, staying there, and just when they were able to get into the pavilion, they'd duck away and go to the end of the queue again. They love meeting people, fellow Australians, and people from all over the world. We had approximately 1,300 staff full-time. We had 4,000, I imagine, volunteers who gave us a minimum of eight hours a week. 150 corporations sponsored us. Four, uh, and 30,000 people were accredited to the exposition. I am told by economists, not necessarily always correct, but it was estimated the economic stimulus of Expo 88 was $1,020 million, just over a billion dollars. We did not lose, met we repeat, we did not lose one hour in industrial disputation. And we enjoyed unbelievable uh, cooperation from the trade union movement. I can tell you there was occasionally blood on my carpet, but we got there just the same. We were all partners in this challenging project. We had that remarkable being called Expo Oz, a friendly, wonderful personality, appearing for a few hours each day, only because the person inside couldn't stand the heat much longer. There was a river stage with an audience capacity of 20,000 people, the famous Aquacade, the Pacific Village, and of course, the monorail, occasionally breaking down, but nevertheless working <coughs> correctly. And then above that, there was the South Bank high rise that I used to call it, 88 meters in the sky, 
still adoring the sun. Our theme was leisure in the age of technology. Bob, you and I had no leisure for that whole period. <laughs> and nor did the other team members. But we enjoyed peeping telling us at Expo leisure in the age of technology. To have been a chairman and chief of executive of such a unique event that possibly will never occur in Australia for many, many years ago was to me the privilege of my life. To see the joy and excitement of our visitors, smiling, happy, shaking hands with people they would, had never met and would never meet again. But there were remarkable contribution and enthusiasm by our staff and our volunteers changed the aspect for Expo. In my closing speech at 10 p.m. on the 30th of October 1988, most of you were around then, I think, I said the following comments. It is my hope that the spirit of World Expo 88 will never fade. We made people smile. We made people of Brisbane the happiest, uh, people smile. We made Brisbane, sorry, the happiest place on earth in 1988. Together we showed the world. Thank you, my Lord Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Premier, for being part of this celebration. May the spirit of World Expo 88 and the Queenslanders who made it happen never fade in this great city, in this great and remarkable state, and in this wonderful nation of Australia. Thank you so much, Sir Lou. I'd now like to ask Sir Lou and the Lord Mayor to join the Premier to officially unveil the park commemorating the 25th anniversary. Thank you.